and we're here with Miro Kopik, marketing strategist from SDSU and co-founder of Bottom Line Marketing. Welcome. Thank you. It's great to have you here, Miro. Thanks, Maya. A steady jobs report today, it helped stocks rebound from a very wild week, but there were some warning signs out there. What does this tell us about the health of our economy in your view? Well, it tells us that you know, the jobs report today was kind of a middling report. Doesn't indicate growth, doesn't indicate uh, contraction, but it was kind of a watch point. The other thing that was kind of scary in today's report was that real wages were, f were flat and didn't grow for the first time all year. But the underpinnings of this, what made the week on Wall Street so crazy, is two indices that came out. One was for manufacturing, which the index, um, when these indices go below 50, they show there's a contraction in that sector. So the manufacturing sector went down to 47.8, and that's a major issue. This is the worst reading since 2009, right after the recession. What really roiled the markets yesterday is the next index on services came out and that dropped from 56 to 52. That's a huge drop. It's the biggest drop since 2016 and prior to that 2014. Services are 80% of the economy, over 80% of the jobs, and consumer sentiment is the third pillar. Consumers have driven the growth of the economy. Um, consumer sentiment is, is, is declining, and one indicator is that Americans are taking longer and longer car loans. So 72 months instead of 36 months or 48 months, this means consumers are tapped out. Um, the next step is that the Fed has, is going to make, a, a, you know, is going to talk about rate cuts in their next meeting, and that's going to be a meeting that's going to be watched uh, by, by uh, business leaders and, and government leaders um, very closely. And in the past, we've talked about the demise of traditional retail and traditional shopping, and this week, another major brand filed for bankruptcy. What can you tell us about what's next for Forever 21? Wow, you know, that was kind of a surprise. Forever 21, which is one of the big stalwarts in the, in the fashion world, especially in fast fashion. So they go from the runway to the store in a couple of weeks. Right. Uh, them, H&M, Zara, brands like that. Um, this retailer is caught on a couple of things. Number one, super fast international expansion. So they're shutting down 60% of their international stores, but still about 35% of their domestic stores, including three in San Diego. Um, and, and one of the reasons uh, is consumers, young adults who shop Forever 21, their behaviors has, have completely changed. Since the beginning of this year, 18 retailers have declared bankruptcy. 8,200 stores have been closed year to date. That's more stores in nine months than any year in, in the last 30 years in terms of retail. But one thing that's been common, and this is gonna be scary for fashion retailers, is and I sound like a broken record, are the tariffs. The tariffs that were applied in September affect mostly apparel items. So consumers are gonna see prices increases price increases in a Forever 21 uh, in November, December, and then certainly by January of 2020, all these retailers, are, all the clothes are gonna be much more expensive. Okay. And let's end with some big news out of the state of California. We're talking about the Fair Pay to Play Act. The NCAA obviously is against uh -huh. it. Will we see this in other states? Well, this act allows student athletes actually to get representation, you know, hire agents and to get paid for endorsement deals by companies. There's a lot of other states that are looking at this on both sides of the political aisle. You've got uh, politicians agreeing that the law should change. So Bernie Sanders said, hey, uh, athletes are workers, so we have to pay them. And right now there's a Republican congressman out of Ohio who's about to introduce legislation on, at the national level. Uh, he's a former Ohio State player and NFL player, and he agrees. And he said the federal government has to get ahead of this or else it's going to be a mishmash of state laws, and that will uh, create a lot of complexity in the future. Very good points, Miro. Thank you so much, Miro Kopik from Bottom Line Marketing and SDSU. Thanks, Maya.